Hi, Dad. We've been up all night. Your mother's a nervous wreck worrying about you. For all we knew, you could have both been dead in a ditch somewhere. I've been out of my mind worrying about you. And I have to find out from one of the staff that you were in at the clinic this morning. And you didn't even have the basic decency to come and tell me that you were still alive. Well, it sounds a very likely story to me. And if your father's half as angry with you as I am, you're in for real trouble. What? I found these pills on the floor of the car. young blokes get up to. But just learn to use your brains, will you? You're playing with drugs, booze and cars and you've got a recipe for a bloody disaster. I've seen more smashed up kids than you've had hot dinners and I'll tell you what, it's not funny. Yeah, I know, Dad. I'm sorry. All right, all right. If your mother knew what you were up to, she'd have a fit. You're going to tell her? No, but I reckon I'll have a word with Jenny. If that Nick was my son, he'd get a good clip round the ears. He's learned his lesson. We both have. How about letting me talk to him? <laughs> I don't know what good that'd do. The little twerp needs to be told a thing or two. I'll make sure he gets the message, Dad. Honest. I don't know why we got to feed them. To cleanse their pellets, man. Don't you know anything about wine tasting? Yeah, I know their clean pellets are costing me half of next week's wages. Look, have faith. You'll get your money back. T Tom? Wake him up. Leave him. Ah, fresh victims. I mean, connoisseurs, gentlemen. Allow me to offer you a drop of this rare and exquisite wine. No oh, thanks, I'm on duty. Uh, certainly, sir. I'll take, uh, take a mouthful. Uh, roll it around the palate a moment. Savour the fruity undertones, the hint of oak, and then spit it out. Yeah, I think we get the idea, Mr Mills. <clears throat> hey, that's not bad. Nectar of the gods, Doctor. And for a small fee, you could be the proud possessor of crates of the stuff. There aren't any labels on these bottles. A, a mere oversight on the part of the vendor, and one that's to your advantage, as it reduces the price to the consumer. How many crates can I put you down for, Doc? Give us another sample. Certainly. What's all this? Stephen Mills, wine impresario. Oh, give me a break. Uh, exactly what I'm trying to do, Doc. Now, just imagine the beginnings of your own vintage cellar at a price even a struggling medico can afford. I'll pass, thanks. <sighs> Oh, oh. Easy, old timer. Want some grog? Plant? No, I never touch the stuff. What's the time? Gone for? Oh, Gary Stevens is coming around to my place. Gary Stevens? He's the dispatcher from Central, yeah? Yeah, he's a mate of mine. He's taking his girlfriend, Sue Hammond, away for the weekend. Oh. Marge and I are looking after a kid. Is that Libby Hammond? <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Nice little girl. Yes, I've met her and her mother. Oh, Sue's all right. Bit highly strung. Oh, you're telling me. See ya. See ya. I take it you didn't care for Mrs. Hammond. Oh, she was the one who threatened me with a complaint for putting her sweet little girl on the pill. At 13, do you wonder? I didn't know she was only 13. Hi, sexy. You owe me a night out. Gina. How many other girls have you broken dates with recently, Steve? Look, I didn't break a date with you. No, you just didn't make it in the first place, and after you promised. Look, um, look I'm pretty flat out right now, so... Steve, I need cheering up. Some fun, a few laughs, a little wine. Well, maybe that can be arranged. Uh, I'll pick you up your own, eh? I'll be waiting. All right. Hey, gang, what do you think? Is this stuff worth drinking or what? Hi. Come in and have a drink. Oh, no thanks, Marge. We can't stop. Oh, what about you, sweetheart? There's some soft drink in the fridge. Yes, please. Good. Oh, uh, what would you like? Coke, orange juice? Whatever. Thanks so much for taking Libby. Well, you know, she's always welcome here. Oh, I wouldn't impose, but... Well, it was John's weekend to have her, and he had something come up. I suppose we could stay at home. No, we can't. Things have been a bit tense lately. Yes, well, a weekend away will do you both the world of good. Oh, I'd really appreciate it. Oh, we both do. Libby! We're going now. OK, Mum. You behave for Mrs Nielsen, won't you? Yes, Mum. 
She's got the number of where we are. If there's any problem, we'll call. She... So don't worry. Just go and have a good time. Now your father will be expecting you at nine in the morning. Don't keep him waiting. All right? You know he doesn't like that. Let's go, okay. Sue. All right. Oh, I love you, honey. Me too. You got one for me, kiddo? I'll put this in the bedroom. Kids, huh? <laughs> Look, Sonia McLean's convinced she woke up on the operating table. post a set of confusion, probably. Well, if it was, it was extremely specific. In what way? Well, for someone who's supposed to be out cold, she knows an awful lot about Chris Warner's social life. Does Waiheke Island ring a bell? You and Chris were talking about his plans for the weekend in theatre, weren't you? So she did regain consciousness? I guess she did. <sighs> How did that happen? Ask Graham Whitfield. He injected Narcan before we were out of the abdomen. Oh, deliberately? No, of course not. As soon as the nerve stimulator alerted him, he put it back under quick smart. Oh, well, not quick enough to stop the poor woman from being scared out of her wits. Maybe I ought to see if I can reassure her a bit. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. But don't be surprised if she's not receptive. Why? Would you be? In her shoes? Easy. Easy, 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 easy. Yep. Stop. Good. Come back. Smooth it out. Settle down, man. We're not going to lose this baby. No, but this scam is going to give birth to untold riches, Sandy. Why don't you talk me into this? Because I'm your buddy. Because I'm paying for the use of the transport. Are oh, you? Yeah? When are you going to do that? Soon. Very, very soon. Unless, of course, you want to come in on the deal. Uh-uh. No way. I told you before. I've had enough of your scams. Your loss. This wine's going to sell faster than lemonade at a New Year's party. For all those poor suckers, though, that could be exactly what they're getting. No labels, remember? Under control. Hey, we can't leave these here. Why not? McKenna will have a fit if he finds wine in the ambulance, bay. I understand you have some concerns about your surgery, Mrs. McLean. I woke up during the operation. I was awake. Just for a minute. Just relax. Tell me what you remember. Well, I recognise your voice. You were there, weren't you? And you were talking to Dr. Warner about his girlfriend, Alison. They'd had some sort of fight, and, and he was taking him away to Waiheke for the weekend. And there was this beeping, and I wanted to open my eyes, and I couldn't. I couldn't move, and I thought I was in a coma, and I was going to be like this forever and ever. But you, you weren't in a coma, and you're fine now. Why did they say I was dreaming? Patients often have very vivid dreams while under anaesthetic. That was the assumption we made in your case. There was no intent to deceive, I assure you. The nurse, she said what happened was idiopathic. It could have been. So that means you don't know why. And the next time I have an operation, it could happen again, couldn't it? It's very unlikely. But you can't be sure, can you? Yes, we can, because you didn't just wake up. It was a mistake. Come on, you lot. Tea's ready. About time. I'm starving. The sooner you put the veg on the table, the sooner we eat. Can I help? Would you wake Tom up, dear? while I dish up. Mr. Nielsen, dinner's ready. Mr. Nielsen? Mr. Gotcha! <laughs> Just let me go, let me go! Hey, Libby, I didn't mean to... Tom, what'd you do? I need that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 in a minute. OK, what do you think? A big, full-flavoured, well-balanced wine with strong Cabernet fruit character and a lingering tannin finish. I'd buy it. Steve! <laughs> all right, all right, I'm done. Done is right. Nurse Burton finds out you've been using a computer for personal business. Get your heart out, right, Nurse. Who's up next? Oh, Mr Rockwell. Come through, please. 
Mr. Kenner didn't mention a complaint being filed regarding the Hammond girl. No, the mother decided against it, I guess. One less thing to worry about. Oh, I don't know, Hone. A young girl so desperate for birth control that she'd go behind her mother's back. Something very wrong there. Libby hardly ate a thing. Well, we all know whose fault that was. It was just a joke. I didn't mean to upset the kid. You should have thought of that sooner. Poor little mite. She's weird, you know. Nervy. Takes after her mother, if you ask me. No one did. Haven't you got some homework to do? That family's got big problems. And whose fault's that? Nibby doesn't like Gary. She doesn't give him a chance. Thinks the sun rises and sets on her old man. Fixated, that's what she is. Oh, where'd you get your degree in psychology? Just passing comment. Geez, you're in a foul mood. Well, I'm tired. Besides sitting up all night last night waiting for your son to come home, I haven't had a decent night's sleep for weeks, as you well know. You're going to start on about my snoring again? I'm going to start and finish, even if I have to finish you at the same time. You're late. It's half past eight. But worth waiting for. Peg. That's where you feel, Gina. No, wait. Where are you taking me? How does my place sound? Cozy. Did you get some wine? Yeah, of course. About 20 crates, as a matter of fact. You're kidding. No. Well, as you know, I've just gone into the wine business, but there's a little teeny weeny problem. I need to label all the bottles, and I thought we could do it together. Some date. Don't be like that. Look, there's a lot more to a relationship than just party, 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 you know? Yeah? Yeah. Like, you got to share things, just the two of you. Like, you work a bit and you play a bit. you got to share the good times and the bad times. Labeling wine bottles? Be a long, lonely night without you, Gina. You ready or what? Just the two of us, huh? Yeah, just the two of us and, uh, and Sammy. Long, lonely night, huh? Come on, Gina, don't let me down now. Look, I'll tell you what. Once all the wine sells, I'll take you out for the best night of your life. All on me. Can I have that in writing? You, uh, hear those jumbos landing on the roof last night? <laughs> Not for me, Stuart. You don't have to sleep in the same room with that noise. Heard from young Lisa recently. No. Pity, she's a nice girl. Drop it, Mum. Is that girl ever coming out of the bathroom? Libby! I'm going to be late. Lib! I'll come and have your breakfast, sweetheart. Tom's going to drop you at your dad's place on his way to work. Do I have to go, Mrs. Nielsen? Oh, he's expecting you, dear. I'm sick. Oh. What's the matter? You've got a headache. Or a stomachache. I'm just sort of dizzy. I want to go back to bed. Morning, Docs. Late night, Sam. Ask him. Had me up till three last night pasting labels on his stupid wine. Complain, complain. I bought you pizza, didn't I? Yeah, with Gina's money. You owe us, man. Hey, um, Doc. Um, Paddy will be assisting you in theatre this morning, okay? I thought you were rostered on. Yeah, I was, but uh, we swapped. I've got a meeting with a potential customer. <laughs> Do you believe this guy? We send him out to get pizza, he chats up the owner's daughter and gets an order. Maybe. I've still got to con the old man. And con being the operative word. Oh, you wound me, Dr. Fleming. Well, just don't sample too much of your own product before you come back on duty, or I will wound you, seriously. <laughs> I'll help. <laughs> Who's your anaesthetist this morning? Graham Whitfield. After that business with Sonia McLean? Yeah, he's still attending. <sighs> that figures. McKenna's idea, I'll bet. The old boy's network really looks after its own. You saw no need to suspend him over an isolated incident. Have you had problems with Graham? Oh, not problems exactly, but he does have a reputation for being elsewhere when there's an emergency. Could be a coincidence. But injecting the wrong drug during surgery isn't. What if Sonia McLean decides to take action? I don't think there's much chance of that. You hope. Now, we hope that this mess is benign, but it's not something we can take a chance with. I've got cancer. Oh, well, we can't definitely tell from the mammogram alone. It could just be a cyst. But that's a cancer. No, Sonia, it isn't. It's a lump of fatty tissue, totally harmless. Oh, good. But... That's well, fine, then. We don't know for sure. I think at this point in time, the best course of action would be to remove the mass. Operate again. I'm afraid so. It's a fairly simple... No. I beg your pardon? No, you're not operating on me again. Not after what happened last time. Oh, the gallbladder operation was a complete I success. I was awake on that table. One of you made a mistake, and I was awake. Where did you hear that? Dr. Rapata admitted it. No, I'm not going through that again. 
Sonia, I don't think you realize the risks. If the lump is malignant and you don't have it removed immediately, I don't you could... care. You're not touching me. Not again. It's nothing to get in a flap about, Sue. Libby was feeling a little off colour, so we... Uh... What's wrong with her? Has she got a fever? No, no fever. Feeling a little bit woozy and that. I'm coming home. Gary! No, no, you stay where you are. I'll have Marge give you a ring as soon as she brings Libby home from the clinic. She's taken her to Shortland Street. Oh, but that's only for emergencies. It's just a precaution, Sue. We're on our way. We'll meet them there. She's coming back. Geez, that woman's a panic merchant. Like mother, like daughter. Freaky. I'm sure there's no need to panic, Jackie, but I'd feel much better if someone could take a look at her. That's what we're here for. Mrs. Arguello. I want to see her, Dr. Fleming. Oh, I don't just. No, I don't think so. Her mum wouldn't approve. They had a bit of a run in, you know, over the P I L L. <laughs> Libby can spell, I assume. She's 13, not three. Still, who else is on? Um, oh, Steve, is Chris or Hornifery? Uh, they should be in theatre about now. Uh, looks like Meredith or nobody. You could take her down to Central. Mm. No, please, I don't want to. I have to see Dr. Fleming. It's up to you. Please. All right, but if your mum goes crook. Thanks, Mrs. Nielsen. But take a seat. I won't be long. Give a man a heart attack. I keep smoking those things, you won't need my help, buddy. They calm my nerves. What are you going to be nervous about? Those for one thing. Ah, well, fret no more, my friend. The wine's sold. Every last drop. I don't believe it. The pizza joint. Mm hmm. The old man bought it lock, stock, and cabernet. He'll take all I can supply. I don't believe this. Steve Mills, wine merchant to the masses. I've already ordered another pallet load. Hang on. Aren't you pressing your luck? Sammy, 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 Sammy. Luck has nothing to do with it. What with the right product at last and my salesmanship, I'm gonna be rich. Filthy, champagne swilling rich. And what the hell are you doing interfering with my patients? What? Sonia McLean. Yes, I did speak to her. Yeah, after we specifically agreed to let the matter drop. What on earth possessed you? The woman was distraught. She needed reassurance. Oh, so you reassure her by admitting a mistake during surgery. Brilliant, Doctor. I only confirmed what she already knew. She was awake, Chris. You know she was. All I know is that there was an electronic indication. It could have been a machine malfunction. You know damn well it wasn't. The woman was awake enough to be aware of the conversation that was going on around her. She told Jackie and I very specific details. Well, maybe she couldn't remember the number of the room you and Alison were supposed to be in, but she wasn't far off. OK, OK, maybe she was awake, but telling her about it hasn't done any good. In fact, it's done a fair bit of harm. Oh, here we go again. Let's maintain the old medical myths. Doctor is God and all that. It may work for you, Warner, but it doesn't work for me. It's our responsibility to tell the patient the truth. Yeah, even when the truth might kill them. Oh, come off her. Sonia McLean has a lump in her breast. I can't be certain yet, but there's a good chance it's malignant. And thanks to you and your version of the truth, the woman is too frightened to undergo more surgery. If she doesn't have it... Any pain there? No. All right, you can sit up now. Okay. No fever, no abdominal discomfort. Any vomiting? Diarrhea? I feel better now. Maybe, how are things at home? Okay. No problems with your mum or school? No. What do you want to know for? Well, I can't find anything physically wrong with you. But sometimes when you're upset or stressed out, it can make you feel sick. Your mum was pretty angry about you wanting to go on the pill. I don't want to talk about that. Why not? I just don't. Thirteen's very young to be thinking about contraception. Is this boyfriend of yours older? Can I go now? I can't keep you here. I want to help you if I can. But you have to tell me what's wrong. can't. It's a secret. There's a thing called medical confidentiality. That means that I can't tell anyone anything unless you want me to. Mm. 
you all right, Marge? You look a bit tired. Marge! Where's Libby? Is she all right? Sue, what are you doing here? Well, I spoke to Tom. We got here as soon as we could. It wasn't really necessary. I tried to tell her. She's a, a little overprotective. Is Libby all right? She's going to be fine. Uh, this is Mrs Hammond, Libby's mother. Oh, yeah. Jackie Manu, one of our nurses. Uh, what's wrong with Libby? Oh, she's quite all right. You're just a bit off colour this morning, so I brought her in to be checked over, that's all. Well, where is she? I, I want to see her. She's in the uh, Tell Libby that her family's here, will you? Oh, you're right. I won't be a moment. <sighs> we should never have gone away. I don't know why I let you talk me into uh, get it. Get a grip, Sue. There's nothing wrong with the kid. You don't know that. Fine. Let's go look. You'll see. Gary! Sometimes an older boy can pressure a younger girl into doing things she doesn't want to do. Is that what happened when you came to see me about the pill? No. Well, he said I could have a new dress if I did it. Well, that was generous of him. He's really nice when I'm good. What happens when you're not? Does he hit you? Sometimes. That's not on Libby. He shouldn't ever hurt you. I'll talk to him if you like. Tell him to stop. Excuse me, Libby, your parents are here. Could you tell them to wait outside, please? Sure. What's all this about you being sick? This program was made with the help of your broadcasting fee, so you can see more of New Zealand on air.